Dear students, today we are going to discuss about oxidation and reduction reactions. In today's class, I will be discussing only about the definitions of oxidation and reduction and then I will tell you how to find the oxidation number of uh, different elements in a compound. I will be discussing about all the rules of calculation of oxidation number. Dear students, if you have not subscribed my channel yet, subscribe it now and don't forget to press the bell button and you'll get uh, all the notification for all the new videos that I will upload at my end. So let us start the class. The chapter name is redox reaction, right? Yes. There are two terms involved here. One is uh, oxidation and second is reduction. Yeah. Can you tell me something what is meant by the word here oxidation? Um, oxidation means uh, addition of oxygen, removal of hydrogen. Uh, addition of oxygen? or removal of hydrogen very good removal of hydrogen it means if I say I'm adding here oxygen to the sodium then the sodium is oxidized is this clear yeah so I will just balance it it goes like this so this is the oxidation of sodium yeah right? or it may be removal of hydrogen for example if I say I have an MgH2 and okay. I add here oxygen it will form here magnesium plus water right yeah so I'll just balance this it will be like this right yeah so we say the magnesium hydride is oxidized right okay yeah and uh, reduction is just reverse of it yes so we say it is a addition of uh, hydrogen or it is a removal of oxygen yeah right? so if I say sodium plus hydrogen to form here sodium hydride so to balance it so we say the sodium is reduced yeah and if we have a uh, zinc oxide and heat it with the carbon it becomes a zinc plus carbon monoxide yeah so we say this zinc oxide is reduced okay right this zinc oxide is reduced is this clear yeah right this theory of oxidation and reduction is called as classical theory of oxidation and reduction. Okay. But the, now we talk about the modern theory. According to this modern theory, loss of electron is called oxidation right yeah suppose I say sodium loses electron so we say sodium is oxidized okay yeah chloride ion is there and it is losing electron it becomes neutral atom so we say the chloride ion is oxidized yeah if you have a sulfur 2 negative it becomes sulfur 1 negative with the loss of one electron then we say this is the oxidation of sulfide ion. Is this clear? Uh, yeah. And the reduction is reverse of it. That is the gain of electron is called a reduction. Okay. Suppose I say chlorine gains electron it becomes Cl negative. So we say the chlorine atom is reduced. Yeah. 
or if I have a sodium positive it gains electron becomes sodium so we say the sodium ion is reduced okay or we have a magnesium 2 positive gain one electron become here magnesium so we say magnesium 2 positive is reduced yeah okay, getting me yes and if you have a sulfur 1 negative and gain the one electron become a sulfur 2 negative then we say s1 negative is sulf is reduced to s2 negative yeah <coughs> so this is the modern theory right yes till now any doubt here um no two, two theories are there one is the modern th uh, classical theory that is the addition of uh, oxygen removal of hydrogen is called oxidation yeah and reduction is addition of hydrogen or removal of oxygen yeah and the modern theory says loss of electron is oxidation and gain of electron is reduction yes so I am sharing one presentation here so you can find this one that oxidation and reduction if in any reaction takes place simultaneously that reaction will be called as redox reaction okay right yeah so if I see this reaction see this reaction the first one yeah to the sodium the oxygen is added yeah so we say sodium is oxidized yes but from O2 one oxygen is removed yeah so we say the O2 is reduced okay right so this is a redox reaction the reaction in which oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously is called as redox, redox yeah. reaction right yeah. so there are many reactions which are of this type number one is the combustion reaction second is the corrosion yeah. third is the batteries and many other do you understand these three terms um combustion i do uh, mm -hmm. corrosion and battery by corrosion you don't know right no okay have you seen uh iron have you seen iron iron in the sense like yeah. oh. and uh, if it combines with oxygen yeah in the presence of water then what happens okay the last thing yeah oh. it forms Fe2O3 something yeah right yeah so what happens there that it is getting rusted we say the rust yeah with X water molecule yeah uh, in the 10th class you have uh, discussed about the rusting yes so we say the iron is gaining oxygen or we can say oxygen iron is undergoing oxidation yeah and oxygen is undergoing reduction getting me yeah so this is a corrosion and in certain batteries I'll discuss in this chapter that the batteries undergo redox reaction at okay. your in your uh, clock there is a cell known as a dry cell have you seen that uh, yeah I guess simply simply uh, in your clock in your wall clock there is a uh, battery back at the back of it yeah right if you try to open it right the upper wall is made up of the zinc and if you open it there is a inside that is a made up of the carbon here and other material is there right yeah I'll discuss all this uh, batteries reactions that are all redox reactions okay. which, are, which are generating the current yeah right yeah so the reaction in which oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously is called as redox reaction so first of all we'll discuss about the oxidation reduction that I have already done here that addition of oxygen or any electronegative element is called as a oxidation right okay yeah addition of oxygen or any electronegative element you can see in this reaction 
fluorine yeah. is being added here yeah so we say the magnesium is oxidized sulfur is electronegative element with the sulf with the iron it is undergoing redox reaction and we say the iron is oxidized okay right and the reduction is removal of oxygen or any electronegative element you can remove oxygen here you can see yeah mercury oxide now we are getting here mercury and oxygen yeah carbon okay. plus hydrogen so we say that this uh, in case of water the oxygen is getting reduced water is getting reduced it now it become h2 yeah so loss of oxygen is called as reduction yeah right or removal of electronegative element you can see here fecl2 now it is sorry fecl3 and now it is fecl2 it means one electronegative element of the chlorine has been reduced has been removed yeah so we say that fecl3 has undergone reduction okay right this way we say that it is a reduction process any doubt here yeah yeah so another way we can also say removal of hydrogen reduction and oxidation right yeah removal of hydrogen or electropositive element is called oxidation you can see this electronegative element is reduced now yeah is removed this electronegative element is reduced is uh, removed if yeah. any electronegative element is lost then we say it is a oxidation or if some electronegative element electropositive element is added then we say it is a reduction you can see to the chlorine the hydrogen is getting added here yeah and hydrogen is an electropositive element do you understand the meaning of the t this term here electropositive um electro positive in the sense the ones which are there in the starting of the periodic no, table no, no, ones no, no, no. with the, the element which has tendency to lose electron okay yeah red electro positive and what is electro negative the ones which gain electrons yeah that's good yeah right this is the basic yeah. definition of the oxidation and reduction now is this clear okay yeah now Before I go into detail of this, we will discuss about the oxidation number. How to calculate the oxidation number? Yeah. To calculate the oxidation number, there are certain rules. This is the first question of your book. Calculate the oxidation number of. Right. Yeah. Oxidation number of hydrogen is generally plus one. Okay. Ah, uh, Nandini, are you noting down all these things? Yes. Right. Keep on noting down. Right. Yeah. And uh, um, generally, it is plus one, but there are certain exceptions here. Except. Okay. Hydrides of. Hydrides of. Alkali. and alkaline earth metals for example if i say sodium hydride nah yeah if you just dissociate it what do you get um na and hydrogen uh will you get any charge on them Uh <laughs> Yes. Okay. I I'll I'll leave this part for some time. Okay. Now if I say I have a NaCl and if I dissociate it, what charge do you get on sodium and what charge you get on chloride chlorine? Okay, uh, Na plus and Cl minus. Very good. Uh so if you're dissociating this one that sodium hydride, what charge do you get on sodium positive sodium and uh, and hydrogen? Okay, uh, Na plus and H minus. Very good. Can you tell me why? Uh, because Na will uh, lose electrons, so it will have positive charge. See, if you see in the periodic table, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Yeah. This is the first group here. As, yeah. As you go down the group, as you go down the group, atomic size. Um, uh, increases. Very good. 
so what happens to the enthalpy of ionization uh that decreases that decreases so tendency to lose electron increases i can say uh yeah yeah it means if i have a combination of these two elements uh sodium and a hydrogen sodium and hydrogen here which will lose electron preferably um, um hydrogen hydrogen no you told me that as you go down the group atomic size it uh increases increases yeah so, so the enthalpy of ionization uh Decreases. Decreases. Yeah. So yeah. tendency to lose electron. Uh, decreases. Increases. When I say, what is enthalpy of ionization? Do you know? Yeah, it's the energy required. Yeah. So you tell me, out of the hydrogen and the chlorine, which require less energy to remove electron? Um. You told me that you go as you go down the group, enthalpy of ionization decreases. Yeah. So it means energy required to eject out electron decreases. Yeah. So out of the hydrogen and the and sodium, if I have combination of these two, which has more tendency to lose lose electron? Ah, uh, hydrogen then. No, sodium. As you go down the group, atomic size increases, enthalpy of ionization decreases. It means tendency to lose electron increases. Yeah. So hydrogen will be gaining electron in this case, and okay. sodium will be sodium sodium will be losing electron. So what charge is coming on the hydrogen now? Um, minus minus right? one, and that is why in case of alkali metal hydride, the oxidation number of hydrogen is minus one. Okay. Are you getting me? Yeah. So you should know about the periodic table first, very clearly. Okay. Right. If you find any any problem with this concept, please ask. Please do let me know. I will discuss that part also first. Okay. You yeah. know you know how does the atomic size down the group vary? How does it uh, vary? Yeah, the atomic size it uh, increases, increases, right? And what is the uh, How does the enthalpy of ionization vary? Um, it decreases. Increases uh, across the period and decreases down. No, yeah. It decreases down the group. Don't cram it. Yeah. Very simply, as the size increases. Yeah. The outer electrons and the nucleus attraction decreases. Yeah. So ejection becomes easy, right? Yeah. The size is increasing here. Right. Yeah. So, what charge is there between the electron and and the nucleus? Which force is there between the uh, the nucleus and the electron? Uh, electrostatic. This is the force of yeah. this is the electrostatic force of attraction. Yeah. Directly proportional to charge on the electron and charge on the nucleus. Yeah. So, as the R increases, the force of attraction will decrease, and ejection becomes easy. Yeah, and that is why enthalpy of ionization okay. decreases. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I was telling you that in case of the alkali metal hydride, if I dissociate it, I will get here Na positive and H negative. So what charge is coming on the hydrogen here? Um, negative, negative. right? That is why the oxidation number of hydrogen is equal to minus one here. Okay. Right. Similarly, yeah. alkaline earth metal hydride. If I dissociate it, what charges will be there on the magnesium and that of hydrogen? Um, Mg two plus. Very good. And H minus. H negative. Right. Yeah. This is the charge that. Magnesium will be acquiring and the hydrogen will be acquiring. Yeah. I hope it's very clear. Yeah. So the oxidation number of hydrogen is equal to minus one only in case of alkali metal hydride and the alkaline earth metal hydride. 
Okay. Do you know the meaning of the alkali metals? Yeah, alkali metals is group one, right? Very good. And alkaline earth metals? Group two. Very good. Perfect. And now the oxidation number of oxygen. About the oxygen. Yeah. Generally, oxidation number of oxygen is minus two. Okay. Right. Nanni, are you getting me all these things? What I am teaching you right now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Am I going fast? No. Okay. Fine. Generally, it is minus two, but there are certain exceptions. Exception number one is. the peroxides do you know what are peroxides <coughs> like h2o2 is a peroxide yeah any compound in which we have an oxygen single bond oxygen okay so if i put up here hydrogen here this bond this linkage when we have a single bond oxygen and oxygen this bond or this linkage is called as a peroxo linkage yeah in that case the oxidation number of oxygen is a minus 1 i'll prove it how right it's okay. a h2o2 what is the oxidation number of hydrogen uh it's plus 1 right plus 1 here and yeah. i'm putting here x for the oxygen okay so x plus x is 2x 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and overall molecule is equal to 0 yeah so you can see x is equal to minus 1 okay are you getting me yeah so the oxidation number of oxygen in case of the peroxide is equal to minus 1 okay second exception case in case of superoxides do you know what are superoxides no no do you know what are oxides yeah whenever we have an oxygen with a two negative charge this is called as a oxide yeah right So if I say I have an MgO this is a magnesium oxide. Yeah. Another is the peroxide. Whenever we have O2 2 negative. O2 2 negative. It is called as a peroxide. Yeah. So we say H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide or Na2O2 is sodium peroxide. Yeah. And now I'm talking about the superoxide. Superoxide is O2 with a one negative charge. Okay. O2 with one negative charge. It means I can say KO2 is potassium superoxide. Yeah. Now I will be discussing here about the oxidation number of the superoxides KO2 What charge will come on potassium if I dissociate it Do you know what is the atomic number of potassium Uh yeah it's 19 right Yeah Can you tell me its electronic configuration um one minute <coughs> yes nanni do you know the electronic yeah. configuration uh yeah it's um 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 1s2 2s2 2p6 then 3s2 then 3p6 and 4s1 okay So how many electrons are there in the outermost shell? One. One. So how many electron it can lose easily? One. One. 
so it will acquire it will acquire one positive and one negative charge on the o negative right yeah so in case of the potassium there is a plus one charge on the on the on the potassium and x charge on the oxygen i am putting here 2x x plus x 2x yeah so what charge is coming on the on oxygen How much? Minus one by two. Yeah. Yeah. So the oxidation number of oxygen is minus half in case of the peroxide. Oh, peroxide or superoxide? So, super so, sorry, superoxide. Superoxide. Okay. Yeah. So this is about the oxygen. See here. Generally, it is minus two. Yeah. But in case of the peroxide, it is minus one. In case of superoxide, it is equal to minus, minus half. Minus half. Yeah. And in case of the elemental form, do you know what is the elemental form of oxygen? O two mm -hmm. or O three? Okay. It is zero. Remember. Elemental form of any element has oxidation number is equal to zero. Yeah. Right. And for the alkali metals, just like potassium, lithium, sodium, rubidium, in all the alkali metals, they have only one electron in the outermost shell. Yeah. So they can lose only one electron, and their oxidation number is equal to plus one. Okay. And in case of alkaline earth metals, can you tell me how many electrons are there in the outermost shell? Uh, two, so plus two. Plus two, so they have a plus two charge. Here. Yeah. <coughs> For the fluorine, atomic number nine, right? Yeah. Can you tell me its electronic configuration? Um, one s two, two s two, two p five. Can it lose electron? No. Can it gain electron? Yeah. How many? One, so it will become stable. So it means the f can gain one electron and become f negative. Yeah. So the oxidation number of the fluorine is equal to only minus one. Okay. <clears throat> But if I talk about the other other halogens, like chlorine. Or bromine, or iodine, they also have one electron less than the noble gas configuration. Can I say? Yeah, yeah. So they can also acquire the minus one charge. Yeah. But at the same time, if I see this compound Cl two O, and find the oxidation of the chlorine here. For the chlorine, I'm putting here x. So the x plus x is equal to two x. And for the oxygen, is equal to minus two. Yeah. Is equal to zero. So can I say x is equal to plus one? Yeah. It can have positive oxidation number. Okay. Cl two O three. Can you tell me the oxidation number of the chlorine in the second case? Cl two O three. Yeah. Yes. Um. So if it's three oxygens here, then we take it as minus two into six. Yes, minus six. Oh, uh, into three. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So three. Yeah. So it is equal to three plus three. Yeah. Getting me? All clear. Yeah. All clear. Yeah. Um. So like, I don't get the elemental form thing. Like, if we have O two, then it has to be zero. Yes. Then we had uh, O two there also, like KO two and all that. So no, why isn't no, it zero that, there? That is not that is not elemental form. That is a compound form. Okay, so if it's only O two and only O three, then yes, it's zero. Yes, yes. Elemental okay. form of oxygen is O two. For the yeah. for the nitrogen is N two. For the fluorine is F two. For the phosphorus is P four. For the sulfur is S eight. Yeah. For Any element like uh, metal, like sodium, iron, copper, zinc, or any other element, 
these are all elemental form and their oxidation number is equal to zero <coughs> yeah but if i say potassium superoxide this is not elemental form this is a compound okay and yeah. it will not be zero we have to calculate there yeah right if i say feo what is the oxidation number of iron here um x minus 2 so x is equal to 2 yeah so you can see the elemental form is this one where the oxidation number is equal to 0 but here when it is a compound the oxidation number is plus 2 here yeah yeah and it can be different also in this case fe2o3 can you calculate for the iron here yeah yeah let me know uh plus 3 very good like this you have calculated yeah right so i was telling you about the halogens yeah for the halogens the fluorine has only minus 1 but chlorine can have minus 1 can have plus 1 right yeah in case of cl2o we got it plus 1 right yeah can you calculate for the chlorine for this compound Yeah, plus three. Two x minus six is equal to zero, so x is equal to plus three. Yeah. Calculate for Cl two O five. Plus five. Okay, you done it like this. Yeah. Okay. What about the I F seven? Calculate for the iodine here. Uh, plus seven. Yeah. I hope you're getting me. Yeah. And for the halogens, they can have variable oxidation states. Yeah. Right. Now we'll be practicing some questions now. Calculate oxidation number of sulfur in this compound. For sulfur. Oh, plus two. No. Minus two into two is equal to zero, so x is equal to plus four. Okay. Yeah. Can you calculate for sulfur in this case? Um, plus six. Yes. Yeah, is it plus six? Very good. Have you done it like this? Yeah. Very good. And what about um, in case of sulfuric acid? Calculate for sulfur sulfur here. Yes. Yeah. Are you getting this? Uh, yeah, X is plus six. Uh, do you know how how I have taken here two here? Uh, yeah. Uh, hydrogen is plus one, so yeah. we take plus two. Yes, yes. What about the sulfurous acid like uh, this one? And for the sulfur, can you calculate here? Plus four. Very good. Two plus x minus six is equal to zero. So x is equal to plus four. Yeah. I hope it's very clear, right? Yes. Right. Now, 
I'll give it some more practice. What about for uh, M N O? For the manganese. That's good. Very good. What about for the MN2O3 for the manganese? Um, plus 3. It's a 2x minus 6 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 3. Yeah. Right. What about for uh, potassium permanganate? This is a potassium permanganate. Calculate for the manganese here. Seven. Yes, 1 for the potassium, x for the manganese, minus 8 for the oxygen, is equal to 0 or x is equal to plus 7. Yeah. What about for the potassium manganate, K2MNO4? Yes. Um, plus six. Plus six. Good. What about uh, this compound? Potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7. Calculate for potassium. Chromium here. Plus six. Plus six. So it is a two plus two x minus fourteen is equal to zero. Have you done it done it like this? Yeah. Good. But now I'll give you some exception case. Calc calculate for chromium here. Ten. You have calculated like this, right? Yeah. Now it means the chromium is losing ten electrons. What is the atomic yeah. number? What is the atomic number of chromium? Uh, Twenty-four, right? Yeah. Can you tell me its electronic configuration? Yes. Yeah, it's one S two, two S two, okay, two P six, three S two, and three P six. Okay. Four S two. Mm -hmm. You say this one, right? One S two, two S two, two P six, three S two, three P six. Then what? Four S two. You say for mm. you say four S two, and then three D four. Yeah, uh, here it's an exception. Four S one and three D five, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, up to this, I can say there is a noble guess. Yeah. Up to this, can I can I write the electronic configuration like this? Yeah. So, how many maximum electron that element can lose? Six. Six. Absolutely correct. It means this plus ten is wrong. This is mathematically correct, but practically and uh, theoretically both chemistry from the chemistry point of view, it is wrong. Okay. Are you getting me? Yeah. It means if you even you know the electronic conf uh, sorry oxidation number oxygen minus two, and calculating like this, this answer is technically wrong. 
Okay. Because in the outermost shell of the chromium, there are only six electrons. Yeah. And it can maximum lose six electrons, not not ten. Yeah. And for that, you have to see that chromium is having this structure. We call this structure as a butterfly structure. Okay. And here we have an X, and here we have peroxyl linkage. So it is minus one here, minus one here, minus one, minus one, and this is the minus two. Yeah. So X minus four minus two is equal to zero, or we can say X is equal to plus six. Okay. Yeah. Now is this clear? Yes. This is the exception case. Yeah. So one minute, can I just note it down? Sure, sure. Take your time. Yeah. Yeah. So, if I give it this compound, what is the oxidation number of sulfur? What is the oxidation number of sulfur? Um, for NA, like we need to calculate it, right? Of course, you can calculate. Perhaps you are making like this. Yes. Yeah. Nanani, just give me a second. I'm getting a phone call. Yeah, sure. Just a minute. Yes. Yes, Anani? Yeah. How much you have calculated here? So, is this right? Like, we write it in this way? Like this? Minus 12. Yeah. So, you will get here 10 and x is equal to 10 by 4. That is equal to now 5 by 2. Yeah. Means 2.5. Yeah. You'll get like this. And this will be a wrong answer. Yeah, how can it be in decimal? You can see here, technically, this sulfur and this sulfur, they're bonded to the sulfur. Yeah. It means from this sulfur, there is no any electronegativity difference. Yeah. It means they are not losing or gaining electron. Yes. So their oxidation number is equal to zero. Okay. This is also zero. Uh, Getting me? The ones which are bonded to the oxygen by double bond. Yeah. And now I'm putting here X here they are not having zero. 
Okay. Now I say 2x plus 2 plus 2 for this one plus 1 and plus 1. Yeah. And for the oxygen it is minus 2 into 6. There are 6 oxygens. Yeah. So 2x plus 2 minus 12 is equal to 0. So 2x is equal to 10, right? Yeah. x is equal to 5. Yeah. So these two sulfurs, which are putting x, they have a 5 oxidation number. And the central one has oxidation number is equal to 0. zero. Yeah. I'm giving this compound here. CaOCl2. This compound is commonly called as a bleaching powder. Okay. Can you calculate for the chlorine in this case? zero okay I'll tell you how this is not zero this structure is like this okay and if I dissociate this the calcium will acquire plus two because it's an alkaline alkaline earth metal yeah and uh, for this chloride ion it will go out as a Cl negative ion yeah and this will go out as a Cl with the O negative ion. Yeah. And for this Cl negative ion, the oxidation number is equal to minus 1. Yeah. And for this, I am putting here x and minus 2 is equal to minus 1 or x is equal to plus 1. Okay. It means the two chlorines have different oxidation states. Yeah. Fe3O4. Calculate for iron here. <coughs> 8 by 3. How much? 8 by 3. How have you calculated 8 by 3? You might have done it like this. 3x minus 8. Yeah. Right? It is now 8 by 3, right? Yeah. Practically, this compound does not exist. This is a mixture of FeO and Fe2O3. Okay. It's an equimolar mixture of FeO and Fe2O3. So, it is x minus 2 is equal to 0 here and x is equal to 2 here. So, 2x minus 6 is equal to 0 here or x is equal to plus 3 here. Yeah. So, we in this case, we take the average plus 2 for the 1 iron here and plus 3 j for the 2 iron. Divide by the total number of iron atoms that is equal to 3 and that is called 8 by 3. This is the method to calculate it. Okay. But otherwise, if you have done it like this, it is by chance only you have got the right answer. But this is not the right method. Okay. I hope it's very clear now. <coughs> yeah. No. Now. Modern definition of redox reaction is clear. Yeah. Loss of electron is called uh, oxidation. Yeah. And gain of electron is called reduction. reduction. Yeah. This oxidation and reduction, these terms uh, are used, but in place of that, now we are also using the term electronation and de electronation. Okay. De electronation means loss of electron, and gain of electron is electronation. Yeah. 
so i think these examples so, are clear are these examples yeah. clear yeah right so in a redox reaction oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously right yeah one element gain electron and other element lose electron yeah for example in this case you can see the b is losing 3 electrons yeah and a is gaining 2 electrons yeah this is the oxidation half reaction this is the reduction half reaction but number of electrons should be same so what i did is i multiply here with the 2 and multiply here with the 3 so these are cancelled out <coughs> now. yeah and now i have got this the main reaction 2b you can see multiply here 2b plus 3a 2 positive in the product side 2b positive 3 positive and 3 yeah. are you getting this okay so i'll make it more more clear now in terms of the oxidation number what is oxidation now in terms of the oxidation number oxidation is increase in oxidation number and reduction is decrease in oxidation number right yeah increase in oxidation number is called oxidation and decrease in oxidation number is called as reduction yeah for example if i say zinc is losing electron and you can see the oxidation number of zinc in the elemental state is equal to 0 yeah and this 2 plus has a 2 plus every ion has oxidation number is equal to its charge okay right and yeah. we say this is a oxidation because loss of electron is called oxidation at the same time you can see there is increase in oxidation number yeah so in terms of oxidation number oxidation is increase in oxidation number yeah and if i say this cl2 has got two electrons and become here two cl negative ion yeah what is the oxidation number of the chlorine on the reactant side um elemental form so yeah, zero. zero and what about the cl negative ion uh minus 1 and it is a reduction and it's a decrease in oxidation number yeah so decrease in oxidation number is called reduction or we can yeah. say here also we can say it is also gain of electron right yeah so gain of electron is reduction yeah. Reduction, and loss of yeah. electron is oxidation now we have got the another definition here that is increase in oxidation number is called oxidation and decrease in oxidation number is called as a reduction yeah i hope it's very clear now yes no uh do you want all these notes Uh, yeah, so yeah. you can send it to me. I send it on the Skype itself, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, after a week, you can also get a video of this class. Okay. Right. Whatever I am teaching you, you can just uh, see it again. Yeah. Right. After a week, but that will take some time, right? Okay. But these notes you'll get it immediately after the class. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Uh, here I take up one example here: zinc plus copper sulfate to give zinc sulfate and uh, copper. Yeah. Let us see the change in oxidation number. Zero for the zinc on the reactant side. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. But sulfate is having minus two charge. You know. 
sulfate is at minus 2 charge yeah so the copper will have a plus 2 yeah this sulfate has a minus 2 charge so the zinc will have a plus 2 yeah and this copper is zero yeah so zinc is it's a increase in oxidation number right yeah so i can say this is undergoing oxidation okay and copper is you can see plus 2 to 0 this is a decrease in oxidation number yeah so i can say this is undergoing reduction okay and now <coughs> sorry suppose i say zinc is losing electron is that clear yeah zinc 2 zinc 2 positive is zinc 2 positive and the copper 2 positive are gaining electron and becoming copper yeah so it means this reaction in this reaction zinc is undergoing oxidation so we call this is a oxidation half reaction okay and copper is undergoing reduction so we call it is a reduction half reaction yeah half reaction and these electrons are cancelled out i can add the two zinc plus copper ions to give you copper and uh, zinc ions in this reaction zinc is undergoing oxidation and copper is undergoing reduction this reaction is collectively called as a redox reaction okay red for reduction and ox for the oxidation so we call this reaction is a redox reaction Okay. Is this clear? Yeah. And what about a sulfate ion? They are not undergoing any change. In the reactant side, it was uh, associated with the copper ions. Now it is associated with the cop zinc ion. Yeah. So sulfate is under not undergoing change. These ions. Which do not undergo change in oxidation number, do not undergo any change in oxidation number. Such ions are called as spectator ions. Such ions are called as spectator ions. Yeah. They are not undergoing any change in oxidation number. Yeah. Right. This is the redox reaction. It was just introduction, the first topic of your chap of your chapter. That is, what is oxidation? What is reduction? And what is redox reaction? Yeah. This is all about that one. Right. Okay. And after this, we'll be discussing about the balancing of reaction and the electrochemical cell that is in your syllabus. Yeah. Have you gone through it? Uh, like kind of, but okay, I yeah. get. It. Right. Yeah.